Okay, guys, welcome to episode eight of the Intertwined Life podcast. No doubt you're going to hear some gravelly, crazy stuff going on with my voice. I am recovering from the last two weeks of what has been quite a crazy battle for me personally, um, most likely combating COVID-19. So this is my story, and I hope you will get some strength out of it, some encouragement out of it. And here we go. Welcome to the Intertwined Life Podcast. I am your host, Jenny Zentz. I am a wife and a mom on a mission. I've got a passion to help women discover practical ways to apply the power of God's word to our everyday stuff. I truly believe that our walks with the Lord should be seamlessly intertwined with our everyday lives. It should affect every move we make and every breath we take. So come on, let's do life together. You've got this, cause he's got you. Okay, guys. So um, I just listened to the playback really quick of the little introduction I did, and I can't, I don't even realize how messed up my voice sounds until I listen to it playback, and it doesn't even sound like me. So I hope you can bear with me with this strange, I don't know, frog sounding thing going on. But this is the reality. Um, just to set it up, if you haven't been following me on social media, you probably have no clue what I'm talking about. Today, as I'm recording, is Tuesday, April 21st. On the evening of Wednesday, April the 8th, I was preparing dinner for mine and Tim's COVID celebration of our 14th wedding anniversary. And so I'm in the kitchen uh, that morning, I had actually done a CrossFit workout with Tim, and we'd been working out every day together since his gym had been closed. And, you know, other than feeling like I had had some allergies and that kind of stuff going on, I had felt fine. And I was standing at the counter making dinner, and suddenly my daughter is standing there, and I looked at her, and I said, I just don't feel right. I just feel like I want to cry. And I could just feel it coming over me. And you know, I mean, I am given to emotional moments plenty of times. And I thought, okay, this could be any kind of hormone thing or whatever. But I just felt like something kind of creeping up on me. And I, I just, my eyes started to water. And then a few minutes later, I had chills all over my body. And then I just had body aches. And this all happened within five minutes. And um, I just wasn't feeling right. I did not feel right. Tim and I are sitting out on the back porch we you know to celebrate our anniversary dinner we let the kids go up and they were upstairs watching a show and eating their dinner together and we're sitting outside and i don't know just i didn't really have much of an appetite 10 minutes into the meal which was this beautiful steak we had made you know and all this really trying to make it this special um, evening for our anniversary and all of a sudden i just felt fever I knew it. I, I've got a fever. And Tim felt, and sure enough, you know, I definitely had a fever. Well, by that evening, I am, you know, by eight o'clock, I'm curled up in bed. I am shaking with chills. My whole body hurts so bad. My fever is um, 101, 102.5, somewhere in that range. I'm feeling just absolutely terrible. Well, of course, you know, COVID-19, the whole thing's going on. It's all going around. But I'm just, I'm thinking surely this can't be COVID, right? It just, it just can't be. Maybe it's the flu or something. It was definitely something. Um, but it's not going to be COVID. I had no cough. I had no, you know, chest issues or whatever. So I'm going on about my miserable evening, terrible sleep, wake up, fever 103, somewhere in that range. Still thinking it's probably the flu. Call the doctor, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. That evening, I end up seeing um, a doctor via FaceTime, just kind of the way things are right now. And he does tell me he wants me to be tested for COVID. So the next day, this is the afternoon of the 10th, which was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This is Thursday. I go in. 
Um, they test for the flu first. Flu is negative. Doctor had already told me the flu had moved out of our area. He did not expect it to be the flu. So with the flu being negative, they did the COVID testing. And then they told me it could be five to 10 days before they get the results. Oh, that's just a miserable thought, right? So go home, fevers high, trying to take Tylenol. The fevers actually begin to not really respond to the medication. The first 24 to 48 hours, the fevers responded well to the Tylenol. Um, then probably within 36 hours, it became clear that it really wasn't bringing it down and my fever would be over 103, actually up to 104 a couple times, and an hour after taking Tylenol, not wanting to come down. Of course, that began to make me nervous, so I'm getting, you know, ice packs and cold water and the whole deal. And that evening, and of course, they're telling me, you know, if it's 104 fever or 103 fever and it won't go away, call the ER. And, and of course, I'm thinking I want to stay out of the ER, you know, stay away from the hospital, so the whole deal. And then that evening in the middle of the night, um, I don't know, probably around 2 a.m., I rolled over in my sleep and I felt a tightening in my chest. And I kid you not, even with like super high fevers and feeling terrible, I jumped out of bed because up until that point, I had kind of been like, okay, you know, no cough, no chest issues, you know, you know, you're just kind of in denial. I jumped up and it was like, oh no, this cannot be happening. And I will tell you that that's when I realized I have to fight. And back, the first two days were hard. And we went from this feeling of there's no way it is COVID to there's really no way it's not, you know, was kind of the progression. And then it, I won't lie, it, it got kind of scary. And those first 48 hours of high fevers, body aches, cough developing, laying in bed, being um, obviously very isolated. Thank God I have an incredible husband who, though he still um, is essential and has been having to work, was able to work from home and manage the house and take care of me because I could have no contact. I couldn't leave my bedroom, right? Um, and I was very needy. And the children are having to homeschool now, which was a new thing, and he hadn't even touched any of that. So the whole, all the time, working full time, the whole thing was just, you know, just the perfect storm. And so I'm thankful for him. He was coming back and forth. I was beginning to get more and more concerned, more and more fearful. And as I lay there, those first, especially that first 24 to 36 hours, as it was coming on me and it was developing and it was becoming more and more concerning, I didn't reach out to anybody else. I just was miserable. And I began to have this doubt, uh, this frustration, this anger. You know, God, why? Um, why Why am I going through this? You know, is my family going to be okay? Am I going to be okay? Because I was never really that concerned because um, just for the record, I am 37 years old. I'm 95 pounds. I eat really clean. I work out regularly. I just assumed, you know, and I hadn't been really sick in quite a while. And I assumed, hey, if any of us got it, it's going to be like nothing. You know, 80% of the people we keep hearing have no symptoms at all. So if we get it, it's like maybe a little cold or something. It's no big deal. This was a big deal. This was, this was a big deal. This was um, up there with, you know, some of the worst flu stuff I'd ever have, definitely the worst fevers I've ever fought for the longest amount of time. And I'm laying there and I'm just, I'm weak, um, not just physically, but spiritually. I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm getting angry. And then I'm frustrated with my, my lack of faith, my lack of strength, my, you know, being the spiritual giant, telling everyone to have that, you know, even if kind of faith and, and how to, bear up under it and all these things. And I'm just laying there like, I didn't have the strength to, I, I didn't have the strength, right? And I'm frustrated with that. I'm feeling very down. I'm feeling 
you know, you're kind of hearing that, who do you think you are? You know, it's so easy for you to tell people to be strong when you're feeling great and it's not a threat to you. And now that you're threatened, you know, you're just falling apart and you're weak and your faith is not solid. And now look what's going on to you and, you know, what could happen to your family and what, can, you know, all these things are going through your mind. So these were dark days for me, those first two days. And here's the thing. I finally had to, to decide to reach out. And this was the best decision I made. I was in this dark, low, hard place. And isolation is dangerous ground when we are going through hard times. I want you to hear that. Isolation is dangerous ground when we are going through hard times. If in the midst of a crisis of faith and everything else, of all crises, if in the midst of that, the enemy can keep us isolated, removed from other believers, or, or just pulled, I mean, obviously my husband's a strong believer, but if he can keep, if the enemy can keep us mentally and spiritually closed in, kind of berating ourselves, holding all that stuff inside, he can really mess with our minds, right? If we'll let him. Finally, I'm so thankful. Um, this was before, I believe it's before the testing happened. Somewhere in that first 36 to 48 hours, I sent a text message out. I have this thread of these amazing women. There are 14 of us. We went on a retreat together in October. And the Lord just really knit our hearts and our spirits together in such a powerful way. And anytime something's going on, a, you know, something goes out to that thread and there's responding and there's praying and there's speaking truth and life through our cell phones. And it's an amazing thing. So I sent them a message and I don't remember exactly what I said. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. That's going to happen a lot. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I let them kind of know the situation. And at this point, I was still in denial it could be COVID, but it was like, I have super high fevers and body aches and I'm in bad situation and the doctor wants me to be tested. Please pray. And immediately, prayer started coming through that text message. Um, they started speaking truth. They started lifting me up. And I want you to realize, don't think that you shouldn't need others. So reaching out was the best decision I made. We think we should be strong enough on our own that we don't need to reach out to others. Sometimes we seem to think that we don't need community, that we shouldn't need friends. Um, I believe that is a lie. I believe it is a lie intended to keep us trapped and to keep us in depression, to keep us vulnerable. And the moment I reached out to my friends, I started feeling the strengthening in my own spirit because their prayers came along and lifted me up in a time when I was so weak. Even Jesus, now please don't hear me wrong. I am so not saying that what I went through these last two weeks compares with Christ facing the cross. I am not saying that, okay? But what I want you to realize was that Christ himself, God in flesh, when he came to his darkest, deepest, scariest point, he gathered his close friends and asked them to pray. We look in, um, let's see, Matthew 26, 36, Jesus, after he was, had, you know, they had the uh, Passover feast and Lord's Supper in the upper room, and they left the room, and he went with them, his disciples, his 12 people, well, minus Judas, to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he told his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And then he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that's James and John. He took his three core, right? And he began to show grief and, dis <clears throat> excuse me, he began to show grief and distress of mind and was deeply depressed. This is the amplified version. Then he said to them, my soul is very sad and deeply grieved so that I'm almost dying of sorrow. Stay here and keep awake and keep watch with me. 
And then going a little further, he threw himself on the ground, on his face, and prayed, saying, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, that's what we want to get to. We want that nevertheless type of faith, that even if type of faith. Not what I will, not what I desire, but as you will and desire. Now, then we see that he came back and his disciples had fallen asleep. And he's like, can you not even stay awake and pray with me for an hour when I need you the most? So I'm thankful that um, <laughs> that my close core group there seemed to uh, keep praying with me and standing with me. I don't think they just passed out um, and forgot about me in my in my weak point. But even Christ, you know, sometimes we feel like we should be so spiritually strong that we shouldn't need others. Jesus himself showed his closest core group, hey, I am deeply grieved, almost dying of sorrow. I mean, that's just, and then he went and he threw himself on his face on the ground. So don't think that we have to be so strong that we shouldn't need others, right? That is a, that is a lie. And that is a temptation that I think Satan tries to tell us to get us alone right? And to get us weaker and weaker. So reaching out was the best thing I did. And th my my group, my core group, these awesome women came around me and surrounded me and, and their prayers. I began to feel their prayers. All I could think of was Exodus chapter 17. In Exodus chapter 17, if you don't know it, there is a battle and Joshua is going into battle against the Amalekites. And Moses says, hey, you go and you fight this battle and I'll go up on the hill and I'll keep the staff of the Lord, you know, my hands raised up to heaven as long as you fight this battle. And what was happening was when Moses was on the hill, as long as his hands were held high, Israel was prevailing. Joshua was prevailing. They were winning. But when Moses lowered his arms, Amalek, uh, Amalek, I'm sorry, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they grew weary. This is what verse 12 of Exodus 17 tells us. So the other men, this was Aaron and Hur, took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. And then Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on each side, so that his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua, I love how the Amplified says it, Joshua mowed down and disabled Amalek and his people with the sword. And the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in the book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heavens. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, the Lord is my banner. All I could think about in this time, and guys, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't grabbing my Bible and reading my Bible, I was really just kind of like zoned out in a lot of ways. But this is why I always talk about building our arsenal. I talk a lot about filling your arsenal, that in the times when you're going about your regular life and you're not facing these huge giants, be in the word, be constantly in the word. You've got to know the word so you can stand on the word when everything else around you is falling apart. Okay, so as I'm laying in my bedroom and I'm in chills and body aches and wondering, do I have COVID and, you know, are my lungs going to give out? You know, all the craziness is going through your mind. As I reached out to my friends, I began to feel the power of their prayer. And this scripture came to my mind because it had been hidden in my heart a long time ago. And God brought this, the Holy Spirit brought this to my mind. Jesus told us that the Holy Spirit would remind us of the things he had taught us. But I always say we cannot be reminded of the things we have not given mind to, right? So this came to my mind. As I'm feeling the prayers of my friends, I am reminded of Moses who had been teaching the people. You know, because this is how I feel. I'm laying here and it's like, I've been doing podcasts. I've been doing Bible studies. I've been, you know, praying over other people, encouraging other people. I've been teaching the people, right? And now I can't even hold my head up physically or spiritually. And I'm reminded of this story of Moses, the, the leader of the people who brought the people out of Egypt, God's chosen man. And I am in no way saying that I am Moses for anybody's life, but 
I'm looking at this. <coughs> so sorry, guys. So I'm thinking about this and I'm feeling these prayers and I'm feeling my friends lift me up and I'm reminded of Moses and I realize that I'm there and I've been so strong, but I've hit this point where I can't even raise my own hands to heaven. And my friends have come along beside me and they are lifting my arms for me when I don't have the strength. And there was so much power in that. So, so much power in that. Please never think that you shouldn't need others. Sometimes we need others to help us shine the light of his truth so that the lies are exposed. Okay, it's in these dark times when the enemy can come in. And if we don't reach out to others to help them shine that light in our dark moments, we won't see clearly. Please reach out. And if you don't have those people, start finding those people, right? Connect with those people. I'm not talking about the kinds of friends that when your husband ticks you off, you can say, oh my gosh, this is what he did. And they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he did that. And you're like going down this terrible spiral, right? I'm talking about somebody who's going to lift you up and raise you up and take you to the throne when you can't even drag yourself there. These are the people we need, right? If you don't have those people, start praying for those people. I have not always felt like I had those people. I had many years where I felt like I did not have those people. But pray for them. Ask the Lord to send them. Seek them out. And be that for others. Okay? Don't just wait around for somebody to be that for you. Be for others what you need others to be for you. Get yourself strong in the Lord. Get in the Word. Know the Word. Pray with others. Stand with others. And then when, when you're weak, they'll be there. They'll be there. So I felt these prayers strengthening my inner spirit. And then I began to be stirred up. And I remembered like David, as David ran towards Goliath, he was reminding himself and others of the victories that the Lord had given him in the past. And I began to feel that. And this stirring up came in my spirit. Now, I will tell you, in this time, I had asked my friends to pray for quick returns for these um, results, for the test results, because they told me five to ten days. That was insane. Well, I got a message from the doctor. They got my results back in less than 48 hours. She said it was the quickest she'd ever seen. Well, my results came back negative. However, the very first question I asked was, what are the potential for false negatives? Because the symptoms were identical and the cough developed and I was feeling the tightness in my chest and all of this. So kind of through all of this, the overarching assumption of everyone involved is that most likely what I had was one of the false negatives that we hear about, meaning that the results came back negative, but most likely what I was battling was COVID simply because the symptoms were identical um, as to what we're hearing. We uh, personally actually know someone who had x-rays and we know this person's father and this person even had x-rays and they could see it in their lungs and yet they tested negative three times. So, you know, this is new. The tests aren't perfect. The system's not perfect because there's still so much we're learning. So the potential for false negatives is very real. Um, we have to fight this, not just spiritually, but physically. And on a practical note, I will say that as soon as I reached out to my friends to let them know what I was going through, a friend of mine, and this was before I ever even would begin to receive that it might possibly be COVID, a friend of mine sent me the YouTube video of uh, Chris Cuomo from CNN, the news anchor or the uh, journalist who had COVID. And he was talking about, it was a very quick clip that I will link to, he was talking about the need physically to fight this, to keep it out of your lungs. At the time, I'm thinking, well, okay, that's fine, but I don't have COVID. And then a day later, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I might have COVID, right? And he was talking about how doctors were calling him and telling him, no matter how hard it hurts, you've got to move, you've got to get up, you've got to breathe as deep as you can, you have to try taking deep breaths and holding it for 10 seconds. You've got to try deep side bends, You've, you know, all these things. And so I'm very thankful for that video because on a physical perspective, it put me in the mindset to fight and to 
keep this out of my lungs. And if you followed my social media at all, if you haven't, I encourage you to go check it out. Um, on, I believe it was Easter actually, on the 12th, I did a video of myself. And this is after, you know, a day or so of friends praying, of my mind getting renewed in my spirit as the Lord brought the scripture to me. And then having watched this YouTube video and understanding that I've got to stay out of the hospitals, I've got to stay, keep this out of my lungs, I've got to, I've got a job to play, a role to play, I've got to fight, I've got to fight physically. Um, yes, get the rest you need, but just laying there on your back um, is not going to help. It's going to make it worse because if that's all I ever did and I never moved, it will settle there, right? So. I did a video on Easter with 104 fever of me dancing in my PJs in my bedroom, um, dancing, shadow boxing, the whole deal, because I want to encourage people to fight. Um, I want, if, if you will share that, if you will go on Instagram or Facebook at Jenny Zents, or you, I actually have a hashtag, Dancing COVID Mama. <laughs> and if you follow that, you'll see the post I put up for several days in a row where I was doing this one video of me dancing with 104 fever and then some other encouraging thoughts each day with, <clears throat> excuse me, with the physical updates of what I've been going through each day and that progression, as well as the thoughts the Lord had given me and hopefully some tools and encouragement to give others because we have to fight. We have to fight physically. We have to fight spiritually. And I realized I had to move my body. I had to stay on top of this thing. I had to keep it out of my lungs. And so as it began to constrict more and more, I kept fighting. I kept moving. I kept going. And <clears throat> excuse me, it was a determination. And I want to share that with others. If anybody is on the beginning of this, or you know someone who's going through this, you don't feel like it, okay? You don't feel like with 104 fever dancing. You don't feel like holding your breath is for 10 seconds when taking a deep breath is constricting. And I was having, um, and I still am some, these what they call bronchial spasms, I believe is what the doctor called it, that makes like a tickling feeling like I have to cough, which I'm going to do right now in just a second. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry. But I had to get to a place in my mind where like this will not take me. I had to be ready to fight. However, guys, I'm not a doctor. Please know that, obviously. Please seek the attention and the help that you need and do what you need. I just want to encourage you to do what you need to do even when you don't feel like it and move and be determined not to let this get you, right? Don't let it settle in your lungs. Thankfully, my blood oxygen levels stayed good and my lungs stayed clear. Now, I know the coughing going on is still the constricting and the bronchial spasms, as they call it. Excuse me. Sorry. That's still there. Some comes and goes. That's part of it. But thankfully, it did stay out of my lungs. And I encourage you to move and be determined. But on the spiritual side of that, as I began to be strengthened again, the way that I began to come out of that deep, dark depression of those first few days is I began to be reminded of what I had known before, what I had learned before, and what I truly, with every fiber of my being, believed. There is purpose in pain. I've sort of been writing a book for like 10 years now <laughs> with that title. And someday, maybe it'll all be out there together. If you go to JennyZens.com, you can look it up um, in the little category section, Purpose in Pain. I'll link to it in the show notes. I've blogged a lot about it. But the long and short is we lost a pregnancy, a baby, between our two kiddos. And these are the lessons that the Lord has brought out and shown me when my biggest fears became reality. 
the lessons that I learned. The fact is, we can grow in hard times and in the midst of trials and struggles like we never would in the absence of them. We would never ask for pain. But the growth that we experience and the way we see the scripture come to life, the way we see God be who God is in a very real way, could never be matched outside of trials. Because it's when our faith gets totally put to the test. And when we hit that rock bottom and we don't have the strength, it's then that we are surrounded by the strength of the Almighty God. And we see scripture come to life and we see and we feel the power of our God in our deepest moments. And it's just like Job. You know, Job went through all that terrible stuff. But at the end, he said, you know, before all of this, I had heard about God, but now I have seen God. And friends, that is the difference. But here's the thing. We have to come to the point where we can take this terrible trial and our terrible tragedies and our terrible hurt, whatever it is, wherever we are, and we can realize I can be angry and I can be fearful or I can be used. You see, our pain can become our biggest platform. I call it the ultimate backfire. When we hit those hard times, first off, as believers in Jesus Christ who claim to be Christians, the world watches us like none other. Because they're going to be like, okay, now you've actually got problems. Let's see what happens. But you see, Satan would love for us to curl up in a corner and for these hard things to just beat us down. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. But he would love for us to curl up in a corner and lick our wounds and push everyone else away, including the Lord. But the ultimate backfire is when we say, you know what? Here is my mess, and I'm going to let God turn it into my message. Here is the pain, but I'm going to let God use it. And that's when it becomes powerful. That's when the purpose in our pain prevails. When we take our broken pieces and we throw them at the feet of the Lord. He can use them to build something more beautiful than we could ever imagine. But we have to make that decision. We have to decide to gather up those pieces and offer them to him and say, here, do what you will with this, right? And we can choose. We have to choose. And there's so much power in transparency, guys, when we let other people see our pain and our hurt. You see, the things that we're going through are going to happen. But if we will say, hey, my life is an open book, I'm going to let it all show and let it be used however you, Lord, will use it, then all of a sudden you have a purpose. You have something bigger than yourself. Now you are partnering with the Lord in the work he wants to do in and through you. Because Jesus told us, he said, you know, in John 16, 33, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome this world. And we've talked about this before. It doesn't mean we won't have struggle and that we won't be harmed in really big ways in this world. But ultimately, our spirit, the truest, truest part of who we truly are, cannot be harmed or touched by this world. But we can walk through the same trials and tragedies as everybody else in this world. And yet, if we will throw it at his feet, if we will let him use our darkest times, then people will be able to see the light of his kingdom and the power of God resting on us in the midst of our struggles. And that is when we shine. That is when we are used. Our greatest tragedies can be the most incredible triumph for the kingdom. 
if we will just say, here I am, here I am, I'm going through this, but there is a purpose. And that's when, with the prayers of my friends holding me up and the reminders of the Holy Spirit, of the victories he has given me in the past, <clears throat> the promises of his word, they all came together. And that's when, with 104 fever, I got out of bed and I danced. And I did it, not because I felt like it, but because this is my message. This is my mess, and this is my message. My message is that my God is bigger than this. My message is that I can be determined to fight, even when I don't feel like it. And my message is for the others who are out there going through the same thing. You're scared. You're in a dark place. You feel alone. My message is fight. Fight physically. Fight spiritually. Stay strong. Know that God is in control. Know that he has a plan. Know that no matter what, he's got this and he's got you. And you can fight. So that is where this comes from. And one of my favorite verses recently is found in Matthew 10, 27. Christ said, what I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered in the ear, proclaim on the housetops. Some versions say, preach it on the rooftops. And that definitely, definitely is um, what resonates with me the most, right? What you hear in the dark, in your deepest times, in your darkest times, when the Spirit comes to you and He speaks this truth and this power to you, don't just keep it to yourself. Share it in the light. Share it with everybody. The things that you hear whispered into your soul in your hardest moments, proclaim those, preach those on the rooftops. Let your light shine. Let your mess be your message. Let your transparency be power. Take all that you are and all the mess that you have and put it in his hands and let him use it. Let him use it. Let him use you and he will and you will be used to bring truth and power and strength to others as they walk through their hard times. You're going to go through hard times. We are all going to go through hard times. But are we going to be angry? Are we going to be questioning? Are we going to be doubting? Or are we going to be used? Let's make a choice. Let's make a choice. Let's stand firm. Let's be strong in his word and mighty in his power. And when you cannot lift your own hands, reach out to those who can lift you up. Reach out to those who will come alongside you, who will pray you through, and you will feel the power of those prayers. And then get into the word. Let it saturate you. Let him speak power and truth to your spirit and to your soul. And know that there is purpose in your pain. If you just give it to him. I hope that this has been encouraging. I hope that this helps. I hope it helps on all levels. Whether you're fighting physically, or spiritually, wherever you are, please share this message. If there are those you know who need to be fighting COVID or others who are just walking through hard, dark times. Share it. Get out there. Get the message out there. Share your message. Share your story. You don't have to have all the answers. You just have to know the one who does. So thank you for being a part of this podcast. Thank you for listening to my story. I pray that you stay well and you pray healthy, stay healthy, and um, that eventually we will no longer be talking about COVID on this podcast. It feels like it's really hijacked everything, right? So hopefully sooner rather than later, we will be getting on to other messages of parenting and marriage and walking out our day-to-day -day life in practical, powerful ways by applying the power of his word to our everyday stuff. But thanks for hanging in here with me. Um, keep walking it out. Keep letting your light shine. Even if your world has been shrunk down to the walls of your own home, 
that is a very powerful place to shine for him. I wish you the best. I thank you so much for listening and just stay well and stay strong and stay in the word, friends. Talk to you soon. Hey friend, if you enjoyed this episode and you got some good stuff out of it, there's a few options you have. One, you could click that little subscribe button because let's be honest, who's got time to remember to check back and see if there's a new episode, right? So click that subscribe button and then when a new episode comes up, it will just by the magic of the internet pop up in your Dropbox and it'll be right there for you whenever you're ready. And also, if you would review this podcast, Oh my gosh, if you like what you heard, get on there, give it a five-star review. If you didn't like what you heard, just pretend it never happened, okay? (laughs) But if you would do um, a review for me, just take a couple seconds and do that. Not only would I be crazy excited, but also it would just be a great way for us to partner together for you to help this podcast be seen by more women out there. And you could be a part of helping more women discover these practical ways to apply God's word to just everyday stuff. So I would love it, love it, love it if you could help me out in one of those two ways. Mm